Hi, this is Misha. And a couple of months ago, we did a video on the Japanese Arasaka sniper rifle. We looked at a Type 97 and 6.5 with the 2.5 power scope. And we looked at a Type 99 and 7.7, .7, a so-called cutback with also a 2.5 power scope. One was made by Kokura, the other by Nagoya. We have a couple more to show you today. This kind of rounds out the variations in the sniper rifle. In my hands is a very late production Nagoya Type 99 and 7.7. .7. And we have the four power optic, which was made especially for the newer 7.7 .7 caliber. While the 2.5 originally built for the six and a half millimeter would work, the four power was felt to be better. It's a bigger scope but it's the same basic pattern. We have the same type of uh, quick detach throw. Pull this out, if I can do it. I'll flip this around. It'd be great to drop a rifle like this, wouldn't it? <laughs> Pull this, flip this around. There's a catch here to push to release and your scope quickly and easily detaches from the receiver. The reason they made it so easily removable is because this is how they would transport them. With the scope off and in a very secure, big, case and when they would go into combat they would uh, mount the scope back on if i can do this you really you really need about i would say three hands to do this job but i'm gonna say five you know if you're gonna wish for something might as well so you lock it on and then you just pull this out and then it locks in the back here in a detent it's pretty secure it's battlefield accurate yeah, this is the Type 99. This is a very late production example and nearly up to the 10,000 serial mark. From 1940 through 1944, Nagoya would produce about 10,000 99 snipers and Kokora would make another 1,000 to 1,500. So the Kokoras are pretty rare. I've seen some as high as 2,000, but you get the idea. But, uh, 11 to 12,000 Type 99 snipers were made during World War II, and there was about another 22,000 Type 97 snipers. Same basic action. We still have a turned down bolt. Of course, we have a hold that open on the last round. Trigger is very much the same as any other Arasaka. Since this is a late production example, we do not have the anti-aircraft wings on the rear sight, although we still have other earlier things like the full length hand guard and we have the front sight. Now it's interesting, these do take the short cleaning rod. They, they do not have provisions being late for the long cleaning rod, but we still have a steel butt plate. Now that is the four power version. This other example here, which is also a Nagoya, this one being in the 9800 range, so just about 100 off, it has the so-called adjustable four power scope. As you can see, there are turrets here, a total of three of them with screw-on caps, and then you can adjust it using a tool, a version of a screwdriver it looks like. Now, Ian on Forgotten Weapons has a detailed video on how to adjust these. Scopes are not my specialty or forte, so I will direct you there. But from what I hear, they are quite still the pain in the butt to adjust. Whereas with the 2.5 and, and 4 power scopes, they pretty much have to be adjusted at the factory, where you have all the fixtures and tooling. This could be adjusted by, say, a unit level, level armorer although you would still need a rest and a bench and the proper tools because you need to loosen these three, adjust the reticule, and then tighten them back down. So while it can be adjusted, it could not be done on the fly, say in combat. It would need to be done by a unit armor. Otherwise, the scope is pretty well the same. We still have a four power scope. This one does still have its short cleaning rod in it up here. 
It retains pretty much all of its mum. We have a few light scratches on it, but it really looks like more from wear than actual defacement, which is pretty pretty neat to see one with a virtually all their mum. Now both of these do not have their dust covers, which is a pretty commonly missing part. This one actually has a pretty darn nice trigger. I don't know if that's by intention. It's probably just by accident and age. These are both matching guns. Again, they're made at the end of Nagoya production, so they're probably made in late 43, early 44. Now, the adjustable scope, they made fewer than 2,000 of these. I believe there are two, there might be three manufacturers that made them, but only 2,000 or fewer were actually filled. They're probably fewer, probably 2,000-ish made with a fewer actually making it to the field. So out of a production of less than 12,000 total, fewer than 2,000 would have this four power adjustable scope on them, making them quite unique and, uh, and rare and, and interesting. Otherwise, the mount and the base and all that is identical to all the others. Same turn down bolt as you saw. Still don't have the anti-aircraft wings on the rear sight because we're getting pretty late in the war. Like I said, we still have the, the short cleaning around. I'll unscrew this here. See? It's more of a sinker. You would tie a rope to it, throw it down your bore. Kind of an early uh, Japanese boar snake. <laughs> and again, usually uh, each uh, squad would have a squad issue cleaning kit. So most of the time they wouldn't use that. They would use the issue cleaning kit. Anyway. But that's about all I have to say. These were used a lot in World War II. Japan, Japan actually fielded quite a few snipers and had some pretty darn effective uh, marksman techniques. These guns were not picked for accuracy or anything. They were just picked off the production line. They would move the serial marking to the receiver bridge here because where it would go on the side, normally on a Type 99, we have the scope mount. So it's pretty easy to tell a, an original from a fake based on the markings and up until recently these weren't ringing huge money so there wasn't a huge uh, interest in faking them one final note about the serial numbers i said this is an all matching gun the gun is however the scope is not there are virtually no scope matched arasaka sniper rifles either 97s or 99s in the usa for whatever reason they 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 just were they were separated. I don't know if when they were brought home or on the battlefield or, or what, but you just you do not find a sniper with a serial matched scope base and, and all that. Now the scopes themselves have their own serials which are always separate. But the base would normally have the serial of the rifle on it, which these have as a serial, it's just as a match. But that is extremely common to the point of every one of them. They just they just were. Now, for an adjustable scope like this, that's all right. You can theoretically adjust the scope to match the impact point of the rifle. But for the other types, the other remaining 30,000 total snipers with fixed scopes, that means some of them really don't hit to the point of the reticule, and there's no real good way to, to get them to do so. So just something to know if you're looking into buying a Japanese sniper rifle. Definitely a better trigger on this one. <laughs> this one has a partially intact mum too. It's got some strikeouts over it, which you can still make it out. Kind of neat. These have the standard 25 and a half inch barrel of the Type 99 short rifle. They're in good shape. But yeah, if I would just kind of share something you don't see every day. If you have any questions or comments, we really welcome them below. We really appreciate you tuning in. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already subscribed and you have the time, we'd really appreciate it if you do that as well. As always, this is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.